its new tin roof had a rotten core. I just never thought I'd actually find bits of it stuck to my shoes. To tell the truth, I loved it. All of it. Gritty streets and golden skies, red eyes, hard pillows, and hard luck stories enough to fill 13 shots on a sticky, rat-trodden bar. This week was a pretty busy one for game news. There have been lots of trailers released, lots of new games are out, and we've got all the best stuff right here for you. To start with, if you're a fan of LEGO, you'll be pleased to know that a LEGO Jurassic World video game is coming out. The first trailer has just been released. LEGO Jurassic World was announced alongside a LEGO Avengers game last week. In case you're not familiar with them, the LEGO games are famous for bucking the trend of bad movie-to-game adaptations. We think it's safe to assume that LEGO Jurassic World will be pretty good once it comes out later this year. This week, we have a lot of Nintendo news. If you're a 3DS owner, you might be pleased to know that Renegade Kid has released the latest episodes of their 3DS FPS Moon Chronicles. In addition to the game, they've also released some pretty cool screenshots in 3D. If you have a 3DS handy, you can hold it up and scan the QR code that's come on the screenshot in order to view it in 3D on your 3DS. Now, is Nintendo looking to their past for inspiration? Well, there are a couple of reasons I bring this up. The first being that uh, Majora's Mask has been re-released for the Nintendo 3DS. In case you're not familiar with Majora's Mask, all you really need to know is that it's a rather unusual take on the Zelda franchise. It has a much darker tone than most other Legend of Zelda games. It's set in Termina, and the moon is threatening to crash down on the world. You have to find a way to stop it. The reason I bring this up is because of an article from the Wall Street Journal. Apparently, according to one of their sources, Nintendo is currently working with Netflix to produce a live-action Legend of Zelda television series. Now, back in the 80s, Nintendo did produce a Legend of Zelda television show, along with a live-action Super Mario Brothers. Because you, me, and the Triforce are going to go, uh, um, attack Ganon, right now! And, let's be honest, we don't exactly remember the Legend of Zelda cartoon particularly fondly. Now shut up! Excuse me, princess. Nonetheless, Netflix has seen both critical and commercial success for its television series, such as House of Cards, so there is some hope for a live-action Legend of Zelda. Additionally, the Wall Street Journal article mentioned that the show is aiming to be something of a more family-friendly version of Game of Thrones. Since the show's not aiming to be as dark as George R. R. Martin's fantasy epic, the show probably won't be set in the world of Twilight Princess or Majora's Mask. It might be best for Nintendo to stay away from any video-related business that doesn't have anything to do with video games. In case you missed the news, Nintendo has unveiled a creators program for YouTubers. If you do a Let's Play of a Nintendo game, Nintendo wants a chunk of the ad revenue from your Let's Play. Now, after Nintendo takes a sizable chunk of the ad revenue, they're willing to give the rest of it back to you. In order to get your money, however, you must first be part of Nintendo's creators program. In order to do this, you must first take a look at a whitelist on Nintendo's website. If any of the games on your channel are not on the whitelist, you have to remove them or else you can't be part of the program. If, however, you are really adamant about getting ad revenue from videos that have Nintendo content in them, you can register each video individually. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a catch. If you choose to register each video individually, then Nintendo reserves the right to reject it. Additionally, videos registered individually are eligible for less ad revenue than videos which are registered as part of an entire channel. So Nintendo's program is really problematic for a few reasons. First being that no other companies are doing this. No other game companies are demanding a chunk of revenue from Let's Players. If Nintendo's program is enough of a success, what's to stop 
EA or Ubisoft from implementing something similar. Also worrisome is the potential of this program to taint waters for criticism. If a YouTuber is also a reviewer, he or she might refrain from saying bad things about Nintendo games for fear of getting kicked out of a program or for having an individual video rejected. Thus, this has the potential to create an atmosphere of fear around reviewing or let's play Nintendo games. Square Enix has just released a fresh look at their latest game, Final Fantasy Type-0. Now, Final Fantasy Type-0 isn't out yet, and it probably won't be out for a while. However, unlike their previous Final Fantasy games, Type-0 is significantly darker. In fact, this game will have the M rating and a much different tone from their other games. On the subject of Final Fantasy, Hironobu Sakaguchi, the man behind the early Final Fantasy games, Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon is set to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Game Developers Conference 2015. Now, on the subject of Square Enix, our review of Life is Strange is now live up on BlackManAndRobin.com. Be sure to check it out and find out just why Justin Eccles gave this game 4 out of 5 stars. Now, if you're a fan of city building games, you may want to know that Cities XXL is out now on Steam. Unfortunately, you might also want to know that this game from Focus Home Interactive really isn't for best. Indeed, the issue with the game is that everybody's saying it's essentially Cities XL, which was the previous game in the series. The developers promised to add new features such as low-level city management and detailed street-level view, as well as improved performance for multi-core processors. Unfortunately, none of that is present in the game. In fact, all that Cities XXL really adds is an extra letter to the name of the game and a new user interface. And that's it. In happier PC gaming news, this week was a very good week for game deals. The Humble Star Wars Bundle was released on HumbleBundle.com as per usual, and it's an excellent bundle. Now, at the $12 tier are free games. Star Wars, Empire at War, Gold Pack, Star Wars of Force Unleashed, and Star Wars of Force Unleashed 2. Star Wars Empire at War is a Star Wars real-time strategy game. It's set during the time of the Galactic Civil War, in which you can either play as the Rebellion or the Empire. In case you're wondering, yes, you can control the Death Star. Now, as for the Force Unleashed and Force Unleashed 2, these two are Star Wars action games in which you play as a young Jedi named Starkiller, who's taken up working for Darth Vader. Now, if you decide to just pay more than the average price paid, which at the time of this video's production was $11.46, so you might as well just drop 12 and get the other three games, you'll get Star Wars Republic Commando and Star Wars Battlefront 2, both excellent Star Wars FPSs. In addition, you'll also get Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, it's regarded as a fantastic RPG and one that you should probably not pass up. Finally, if you just pay a dollar, you'll get a Steam key for Star Wars Dark Forces, which is a rather old but still very good Star Wars FPS, a copy of Star Wars Jedi Knight Academy, which is a rather old Star Wars action-adventure game, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which, as we all know, comes before Knights of the Old Republic 2, and it's still an excellent RPG worth playing. Now, if really great Star Wars games don't excite you, you'll also want to take a look at the Humble Weekly Bundle. This week it's called the Humble Weekly Bundle Adventures, and it features a bunch of really great point-and-click adventure games. Now, on the $1 tier is Detective Grimoire, Broken Sword 1 and 2, and The Whispered World Special Edition. In Detective Grimoire, you play as a very cartoony detective who is looking to investigate a murder. Now, it takes place somewhere in a tourist trap in the middle of marshes somewhere. It looks pretty interesting. Um, Broken Sword, on the other hand, seems a little bit more serious. Um, it's set in Paris after a brutal murder, and it's widely regarded as a classic adventure game. So if you don't own it and even meaning to get it, you can grab it in the $1 tier. 
Now, The Whispered World, on the other hand, is a much more fantastical adventure. Um, the world is at stake. You might want to check that out, too. Now, if you're willing to beat the average, you'll get Episode 1 of The Detail. Now, it's a crime noir adventure game in an American city. Um, there are gangs, tough moral choices to make, and branching dialogue. From what I've heard about The Detail, it's only Episode 1 included in the bundle, and it's rather short. However, it is pretty interesting. Also included in the Beat the Average tier is a Golden Wake. Now, in case you've not heard of it, the Golden Wake is a point-and-click adventure set in the Roaring Twenties in which you play as a young, ambitious real estate agent. That's right, a real estate agent. It might not sound like the most exciting premise, however, a Golden Wake really is pretty good. It's rather reminiscent of The Great Gatsby, it has a fantastic soundtrack, and a pretty memorable story. While it's not the most complex adventure game out there, it's certainly one of my personal favorites. Finally, in the Beat the Average tier is Cognition, an Erica Reed thriller. Now, in this adventure game, you play as a detective with psychic powers. It's pretty interesting, and we have a review up on Black Man and Robin, written by Zishan Shazid some time ago. If you decide to drop money at the $10 tier, you'll get Broken Sword 5, which is the fifth game in the Broken Sword series, and it is rather strange that Broken Sword 3 and 4 aren't in the bundle, but hey, maybe they'll appear in a future bundle. Now, another game bundle is going on over at BundleStars.com. For $5, you get Afterfall Reconquest, Evoland Meridian New World, Bit Dungeon 2, Claire, Pineview Drive, Madballs in Babo Invasion, The Nightmare Cooperative, Sideway New York, Axe L, and Bird Station. Now, there are a lot of games here, but in particular, I like to focus on a couple, um, Evil Land and Bird Station. Now, to start with, Evil Land is a rather unusual sort of platformer. It's a playable history of video games, which is pretty cool. You take the protagonist through, well, the history of games, in order to save the day. Remember the Game Boy era? PlayStation era? Well, it's all there, and it looks pretty cool. I have to admit, I've had this one in my library for a little while, and I've not played it yet, but I'm going to amend that very soon. Bird Station, on the other hand, is a very short sci-fi adventure game. It's set on a space station, the titular Bird Station, and it's very mysterious. The game has a great sense of atmosphere, and I'm not going to go into describing it because it's far too easy to spoil. You'll just have to take a look at my review. But I do feel comfortable saying that even though it's short, it's very satisfying. It's so satisfying, in fact, that we're giving away copies of it over on blackmanandrobin.com right now. So do yourself a favor and visit our site. There you can find details on how you can win a copy of Baird Station for Steam. Now, if you own the endless racing game Race the Sun, which is a fantastic game, by the way, you should know that the Labyrinthia update has just hit the game. This update adds a whole new sort of gameplay to Race of Sun. Um, you need to play the game in order to unlock it, but it's totally free if you already own the game. Additionally, the latest update adds improved support for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4 controllers, as they'll now be automatically noticed by the game. ...by the fact that there are lots of switches, doors, and spinning things to figure out. Everything considered Labyrinthia is really, really difficult. We had a ton of fun designing it, and we hope you have fun dying in it. A game that hit Greenlight recently that caught my eye is the story-rich roguelike Transcendence. It's a very unusual game. It's a sort of shmup with roguelike elements, but there's a space opera story. It's kind of strange, and it's actually free to start playing, so I would recommend taking a look at it. If you play the game and you like it, be sure to give it a yes vote on Steam Greenlight. If you are looking for a spy thriller, you'll also be pleased to know that Camouflage has just announced Republic Remastered for the PC. The game is coming out on February 26, 2015. Vice Admiral. This better be important. I have a fleet to attend to. Yes, about that, Richard. I don't know who you are or how you're doing this, but somehow you found a way into this place. Come out, child. Make it easy on yourself. You let altered copies of the manifesto reach the children. Everything is fine, sir. 
In case you've not heard of Republic, you should know that the game was a big success on Kickstarter and it was released for mobile platforms. Now that the game is coming to PC, you'll have a chance to experience it at your home computer if that's what you're waiting for. If you're looking for a darker adventure, you may be pleased to know that the game Sunless Sea is out for Mac and PC. It's a roguelike game that takes place in a boat. In the world of fallen London, dark things are afloat. The game is set in a post-apocalyptic Victorian age. Transdimensional hallucinogens are all the rage. Our writer Jackson Simpson shall soon review this dark thing. We're all very sure of its praises he shall sing. Thank you everybody, that has been my inner Edgar Allan Poe, but speaking seriously, this game which is full of Lovecraftian horrors has gotten plenty of good reaction from critics. You'll want to take a look at it if you're a fan of Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, or other weavers of weird fiction. Finally, if you like Shakespeare, and if you like choose-your-own-adventure games, you're going to want to check out To Be or Not To Be. To Be or Not To Be is a humorous take on Shakespeare's Hamlet. In the game, you can play as Hamlet himself, Ophelia, or as Hamlet Sr. While I confess to having not played this game, I confess to having not yet played this game. It looks too good to pass up. Well, that's it for this week's Game News. Be sure to follow at Black Man and Robin for all the latest reviews, previews, and interviews. And follow me at Jordan Cameron for my overviews.